From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It's Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, 30 minutes of nothing but tour of duty, off-season conditioning, workout observations with myself at Irish Show Fell. Wake Up War Champ, presented with limited commercial interruptions today, is presented to you by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida. CPTallyBar.com is the website. You can always hit the QR code on your screen. It will take you to the website. Lunch specials, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., only $8.99. And on Fridays, your lunch special are those hand-breaded chicken strips in a basket. Dipping sauce on the side or tossed. You pick. That's how it works at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida. We're also presented by Vitamin Energy, vitaminenergy.com. The promo code is WarchampBogo, Warchamp, B-O-G-O. Buy an item, get one of equal or less revive for absolutely free. How am I still functioning right now after waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning yesterday? Y'all do it because y'all are strong. I'm not as strong. But I had Vitamin Energy to help me out. Shake it and take it. Energy with benefits. VitaminEnergy.com. And MyBookie.ag. Promo code is WARCHANT. Use that for an instant cash deposit bonus over at MyBookie.ag where you can bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Futures also available when it comes to college football as well as everything that's going on right now in season. That promo of the War Chant requires a $50 minimum deposit and a rollover requirement of one time or deposit total, including bonus for withdrawal for full terms and conditions. Visit mybookie.ag slash about dash us. All right, with all that out of the way now, we're going to turn to our managing editor, Ira Schofel. Uh, he was one of, I don't know, six of us uh, that were over on the campus of Florida State University on Thursday uh, to catch tour of duty, the last tour of duty of the 2024 off season started at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, sun was not up. And then when we exited, the sun was up. It was really cool. Um, we talk about it and I didn't want to make it a long meandering thing. So we kind of uh, hit some key points. I like try to structure it and regiment it out. So hopefully it uh, makes it a little bit more uh, digestible and palatable for you to listen. So I'm going to stop talking now and uh, we'll kind of stop talking. But here's Ira and I, 30 good minutes, talking about the tour of duty workouts. All right, let's get to it, everybody. Tour of duty was yesterday. Uh, you want to know what we thought. And by we, mostly want to know what Ira thought. I'm going to throw in some thoughts as well. Ira Schofel here, managing editor of Warchant.com, the ultimate symbol sports source. Ira, thanks for taking time out. How are things on the north side of town? They're good, man. I feel like you're toying with the fans' emotions, though, the, the people's emotions. They're One day they get Corey, the next day they don't get Corey. I mean, it's uh, it's got to be it's got to be a tough life. Are you are you at least letting that setting them up in the description so they know what they're getting in for? Or are you just they fly in blind, bro? Your name is in the show title, like people know, <laughs> and that's bringing them in. That's keeping the ratings up, keeping <laughs> sure. me afloat, brother. Sure, sure. Uh, box of vitamin energy coming your way uh, for doing sure. this. So you know, if we just sat here and talked big picture stuff. I feel like we could ramble on for 20 minutes. So I try to make a little bit of a kind of like an outline here. I are things that I kind of wanted to maybe key on. Hopefully maybe keeps us a little bit on schedule, if you will, because we don't have Corey here to just to me fire off a question and him talk for 25 minutes. So can I, can I ask you one thing real quick? Yeah, sure, sure. Has any school football, has any football college football program ever got less than rave reviews on a day like that? <laughs> like is UMass's tour of duty or four quarter drills or right. reporters going home going, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is the year they're going to win three games. You know, I mean, I I know what you're saying, but I kind of think so. Maybe. I mean, the way they looked on Thursday, you know, I, I had some reservations, some anxiety. I mean, they lost. I mean, they had 12 dudes that went to the yeah. NFL combine. I'm like, how are they going to replace all those guys? And you know, the whole thing is getting reasonable facsimiles. And I'm like, all right, most of these guys have, and there was that kind of verve, that kind of energy. I think like a, a winning culture is, and I, I bash on culture all the time. Like there's a certain sound to it in a moment like that, in, in, a, in a practice, in a workout like that. And they still had it. And, and that's kind of what I remembered from last year, Ira. And I want to ask you, like, do you remember how you felt looking at them last year in, in that moment in the tour of duty and any similar feelings? Or is it just so far in the back of your head that, you know, you're just kind of starting from scratch and, and flying anew as we go into the season? I should have cheated and gone back and watched uh, uh, the rap Jeff and I did from the from tour of duty last year. But <laughs> my guess is it was probably pretty similar. And the thing, you know, and I thought, um, you know, Josh Storms, I thought had the best quote of the day. 
um, when he said that, you know, that was such a veteran team. They looked great because they all knew what they were doing. So many of those guys have been in the tour duty. And I remember that was like a big talking point was I, I think, in fact, I think I, I distinctly remember saying this in that rap last year um, that it was such a stark contrast to the first couple of times we saw a tour of duty because they were so good at it. You know, they guys knew exactly what they were doing. They were, they were flying around. They, you know, you didn't see guys really struggling, you know, one or two, maybe freshmen. Um, but for the most part, all the guys that had been in the program looked so good at the tour of duty um, that, you know, you were, but we were already excited about this team. So it was kind of like um, it was almost self-fulfilling, but I thought Josh Storms was really accurate when he or I think if you're a Florida State fan, you're hoping that he's very accurate when he says this team is different because th- this team has nothing but things to prove. Like everybody, whether it's the the young guys, whether it's the transfers, very few of these transfers were super productive at their previous schools. A couple of them were, but a lot of them weren't. And then a lot of the veterans on this team, yeah, I mean, Shaheen Brown's played a lot. Azaria Thomas has played a lot. Uh, Ja'Kai Douglas has played a lot. Uh, there's a lot of guys on this team that have played a lot, but they weren't exactly the stars of the team. If they were the stars of the team, they probably would have gone to the NFL too, along with all those guys. So um, from that standpoint, I think, you know, it's 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 different, but similar. Like there's, there's a lot of excitement. I think you're right to say that the excitement seems warranted. Um, but I think where I kind of, you know, where I started questioning myself a little bit, it's like, man, I was so excited about so many different things at this, at this workout that I kind of wanted to check myself a little bit and say, Hey, Mm -hmm. they're not even practicing yet. But, but yeah, man, I think we were super excited last year and I think we're very excited this time, but just maybe for different reasons. Yeah. I didn't see anybody lose their breakfast. And the only time I remember them like looking somewhat out of sorts and maybe like not knowing what the next drill or the next rep was, was a line of guys that were like chomping at the bit to get to the next rep. And it was like, no, hold on one second. Like the other group is going, all right, three seconds have passed. All right. Now you guys are back up. So like there was that level of energy and excitement and, you know, everybody knowing where to go. And I mean, listen, they've, they've done a, you know, several of these before we were able to watch it. That was the last one of the season. So right. they've, they've been through it. So um, yeah, I, I guess to your point though, as well, like there's, there's a, it's really hard to watch that and then nitpick at stuff and be like, oh, well, that doesn't look good. Um, but I'm going to try my best at some point to maybe get to it. But let's, uh, let's see on the positive beat here, Ira. Uh, give me your three stars of the day. I know you and Jeff were, you know, it's so hard because you name one guy and then you name two and three and, and it just starts to become like an avalanche of, of good vibes. But try to give me three guys that, you know, now that it's been several hours as we record this, uh, still kind of stand at the front of your mind in terms of uh, who stood out on Thursday. Yeah, man, I, I'm still, and we just, I just put a story up on the website. People can find it at warchant.com uh, by Matt about uh, Malik Benson. I just, man, I, I was blown away by that guy. And I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, yes, he was a junior college All American, number one junior college player in the country, uh, but didn't do a whole lot at Alabama. And um, I mean, I knew he'd be a good athlete, but I was really impressed by just how charismatic he was, um, you know, just leading guys and, and so upbeat and talkative. It reminded me, I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I was trying to think, I was going to say it kind of reminded me of Jeremy Johnson a little bit, but like it just was a, there was an energy mm-hmm. and a professional about him that was really palpable. And I thought that was really impressive. Um, and it felt I, authentic. And right. It authentic. And they it didn't, they, yeah. yeah, it didn't seem performative. Right. No, no. Yeah. I agree with you hundred percent. And apparently that's how he's been, you know, no. Storms talked about it, that he's just been the guy that comes early, stays late. Uh, drags other guys out there. And again, man, like that may not have stood out at Alabama and it, and it, it probably doesn't stand out here. This is a team with a lot of guys who are willing to work hard, uh, but it's just cool to see it from a new guy who, I mean, if he's got, if he's as good as he was supposed to be coming out of junior college, they may have really uh, hit something there. Um, you know, I also, th- I mean, there was a bunch of guys, like we said, we could pick a, a ton. Um, I thought, you know, Hakeem Williams is hard to just get past because, Again, it's just such a stark change from a year ago uh, at this time. So he really stood out to me. And then I'm going to give a tie to uh, two guys under the radar. This is my two my two wild cards to to a couple of brothers, Jalen Lucas and Ja'Kai Douglas. All right. First of all, Jalen Lucas is electric, man. That kid. I I mean, you had to figure he's fast in athletic. He's had 100 yard kickoff returns, multiple of them. But watching him, even in short spaces, man, he is sudden. Um, I really hope they figure out a way to use him on offense because um, 
I mean, I'm sure he can't break a tackle. He's a, he's a small dude, but man, he can fly and he's got a lot of, it seems like he's got some wiggle to him. Uh, I was really impressed with him and Jakar Douglas, man, just the leadership was just off the charts. I thought, man, he, as soon as he would finish running, he would run back and lead the other guys. And, and again, that didn't seem forced. You know, I, I'm sure there are some guys who are trying to uh, kind of audition to be leaders, um, but it seemed pretty sincere from him as well. And I think we've seen some of that before. So um, that just stood out to me again for a position group, a wide receiver where there's not a ton of guys who've done it. He has done it probably more than anybody else in that room. He's had some big passes and some huge games. Come, he's coming off of really playing well at the end of last season and then uh, showing real leadership. So it, it stood out to me not because of just his tremendous – he's obviously very athletic and fast, but just the uh, some of the intangibles stood out to me. How about you? Yeah, yeah I mean, he looks like he was just like vibrating, like yes. buzzing the entire day, Jalen Lucas. It was really impressive. I want to ask you about Hakeem because I, I feel like the way – I don't know how Jeff spoke about him on the show – uh, yesterday as folks are listening to this, but I know in the wrap up, like, I just I hope folks like aren't embracing or, or expecting like Julio Jones, how much of, he, of how you feel about Hakeem is because last year when we saw him during tour of duty, it was just kind of like, you know, Van Dravius was like almost lapping him in some drills. And that was like right. the thing that stood out. How much of it is like the relativeness of, of where he was last year to where he is this year makes you feel good about where, what he looked like, I guess. No, I think definitely the relativeness is a big part of it. And, you know, and Jeff and I, I mean, Jeff is, Jeff is super bullish on Hakeem Williams. I mean, as you said, it came across yesterday, but even when he and I, um, when I was on his show, I think Monday or no, but certain seminal headlines on Tuesday, we were talking about the receivers and he, he thinks he might be the number one receiver. Like he thinks he might be, uh, I think Benson's probably gonna be the number one receiver, but he thinks Hakeem is. And uh, certainly what we saw yesterday didn't change that opinion at all. Um, but, yeah, I'm thinking more relatively. Um, you know, I mean, I do think he's going to be one of their top receivers. Uh, but he looks, man, again, if, if I had never seen him before, though, I mean, that body, man, it, 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 that size to be that trim and, and, and he's added some muscle, uh, just it, it wasn't necessarily how he ran the drills. It was It was more just his physique. Yeah. No, he does look impressive. Man. He's, I hope he, he should be carrying the sledgehammer coming off the bus uh, at all <laughs> right. games. Uh, I'll say that. Uh, my three stars, I'm going to go with Shaheem. I think yeah. he just looks so fluid and just at ease. Uh, and he's, he's definitely growing into what they expected him to be athletically. Um, and he just seems to have that nose for the football, playing the game. So those things kind of getting married together here uh, makes you feel really good about the future. Patrick Payton, I thought, you know, he's a guy that, very passionate in practice and sometimes kind of straddles that line of, of having too much energy and, and not being able to kind of dial in and focus. I thought he was just extremely stoic. Like he, he did not grimace. Uh, he was straining. You could tell, but he was embracing all the challenges at every single drill. And maybe that's like a level of maturity now that he has and knowing how to just kind of absorb everything that's going on around him in a practice or a workout. Uh, so I thought that was a, a, a nice key. Uh, and then for me, Josh Farmer, and that, and I asked Josh Storms uh, because I'm just like, should he be this big? <laughs> he looked big absurdly big. That's why I'm like, is he speed size combo where you want him to be? And he's like, yeah, you know, you, you see him. You know, he came here. I don't. I know he said 240, maybe 260. He came in as as a freshman, and now he's over 310 pounds. But then he followed up by saying, and the way he moves in the drill. So I'm like, okay. They're they're okay with this, so that makes you feel excited about a guy of that size and that stature uh, playing in the trenches, and, and obviously a, a money year for him. So uh, those are the three guys that really kind of stood out to me. And you know, Ira's uh, observations much more in tune because Ira was able to kind of walk around and check things out. I'm I'm looking at everything through a camera lens, filming this whole thing. So those are the guys I just remembered uh, looked really good in their in their drill. So no, I thought you're good. yours are great, and uh, especially Shaheem. And I, I'm always. Yeah. Uh, high up in the Shaheem. I don't know if I'm the president, but I'm very, I'm a board member of the Shaheem Brown fan club. And uh, now I thought he looked great. As soon as I walked in, he was the first guy you noticed. And I actually thought he was kind of similar to Jakai in terms of just that leadership. I mean, he was uh, just very vocal and, and, and encouraging other guys. And you could tell he's taken some leadership of that secondary. All right. We're going to call this one, the laundry money guy. Basically, you're doing the laundry. Well, I do laundry. You guys have wives that help out around the house. I have nobody helping out around the house. Not that you guys don't do laundry sometimes, but, you know, anyhow, I'll stop being uh, – I'll take that out of the show maybe. Maybe I won't. Uh, but who's the laundry guy? 
you basically are doing your laundry and you're checking your pocket. Like, oh, I got a twenty dollar bill in my pocket. That's cool. Like, what a nice bonus. Who's the guy that you you kind of maybe forgot about, uh, but then saw on Thursday and you're like, oh, I forgot he's still around and he actually looks pretty good. I would have a couple of candidates, but um, probably my best one's probably Greedy Vance. Okay. Um, you know, I, 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 I you know, Jarian Jones really came on last year and kind of you know took over that nickel position, and I wonder, I wonder. If Greedy Vance, you know, takes that back over and asserts himself, I thought he looked really good. Every every time I would look at him, I'm like, oh shoot, Greedy Vance. Like we don't really talk about him, but I think he's a nice player, and I thought he looked great in those drills. Again, you know, those drills are made for the smaller guys. I mean, you know, you, you know, those those you know smaller, more athletic DB receiver types are always going to excel in those drills. But I thought he looked great. Another guy I would throw in there, not that I forgot about him, but just I, because I was so impressed by him as a guy that I didn't really know. I wasn't thinking about was Jackson West. I mean, he looks oh. like a, I mean, he's always been a, a nice player. I think as a guy who just couldn't get healthy. Oh. Um, and you knew he was a, an athlete. I think he played three sports in high school, but um, he just looks, he looks different to me. I mean, he's ripped. Um, and it was really moving. Well, I'm glad you brought him up because he was wearing a black Jersey, which during the season means like you're a walk on. So when I was seeing guys in black jerseys, I was kind of glossing over them. Mm-hmm. And he's the first guy that like, I'm like, Oh wait, they actually got guys in scholarship wearing black jerseys. And I'm like, holy smokes, look at this guy. He looks, looks like Adonis. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, hopefully he's a guy that can stay healthy because they've always raved about what he can be. And it seems like injury, more so than anything, has stood in his way of being a, a productive member of the team. So I'm glad you brought that one up. Mine, man, my laundry money guy that I totally forgot about, uh, and it's a position of, of need for them because of what they've lost in terms of Jared Verse and I guess to a much lesser degree, Gilbert Edmond leaving, but Jaden Jones. Yeah. You know, for, for as much as we talk about Malik Benson being the number one Juco guy two years ago, Jaden Jones was kind of in that rarefied air when it came to being a Juco prospect, but then he got injured. I think his last year in junior college, you know, last year, I think might've been like his, not even a full year coming off that injury. Maybe it was like a year and a half coming off the injury. Yeah, so, not even a year. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, and I'm that guy, right? I, I'm the guy that's always like, give these you guys are. time. I was going to say that that's yeah. like, uh, like, you know, how betters have systems like gamblers have systems. Like uh, I always play a road dog coming off of a loss or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I think your system is year two, year yes. two for the, for the explosive guy coming off of an injury. And, and yeah, man, I think you might be right on that one. Yeah. And you know, he did not have any of the knee braces and stuff that he had on his, on his person last year. So, to, and he was moving really nice. So it's like, all right, man, that, that, that could be a nice piece. Cause you like what you have with Patrick. I thought Marvin Jones jr. Looked really sharp as well. And if he's a guy that can give you something, then that feel, you know, adds another piece to a very important position when it comes to playing football in this day and age. Um, all right, who's the all aboard guy? Uh, who's whose bandwagon is constantly uh, full and everybody keeps bothering us about why isn't he playing? Uh, where is he in the depth chart? And after they they either read your observations or watched your video, like, see, like what's going on? Like, why isn't he not playing more? Who's your guy that's uh all aboard and his bandwagon is going to be chugging stronger than ever now. Uh, I don't know if it is this moment, but I'm going to say maybe Julian Armella. Um, oh, man. Oh, man. All right. We're on board <laughs> on that one. There we go. Cause uh, didn't he look bigger? I thought he looked a lot bigger, right? He looked like an enforcer. Like, yeah, yeah man, he's, he's, he's filled in quite nice. Yeah. And he moved really well to that. To me, yeah. it was him moving well, I thought. Well, yeah, but, I, but it's like his, his body journey has been interesting because, you know, in high school, remember like when he was first, five-star offensive lineman, he was just big and heavy and ma- massive. And he would just muscle kids around and, and just throw them around like rag dogs, uh, rag dolls. Um, but then he lost all that weight. His senior year of high school, he wanted to become like much more fit and lose all the bad weight. And he did, but then he was almost like too lean these last couple of years. But now he looks like, I mean, he's put on a bit much weight. I saw that they list him at six six three twenty. I don't think he was listed anywhere near that heavy last year. I, I haven't gone back to look, but I think he was listed closer to less than 300 maybe. And he, I mean, he looks uh, like he's put on a lot of good weight. And like you said, he, he ran really good. I, you know, I don't know that the door is open for him to play or not. It might be. Um, But yeah, man, when people see him, um, you know, you're definitely, it's, it's, it's just going to add to that question because people have already been asking it for the last couple of years. Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Yeah. I don't think they've, up, you know, I went tried back and, and see what they had him listed as, and it, it looks to be kind of along the lines of what they have him listed at now. So maybe they haven't fully updated, but yeah, he just looked, he just had a different look to him, man. And he he was engaged, and it wasn't, 
It wasn't like false bravado sort of stuff, which I, I feel like I saw some of that from him last year, which, and I get it, man. Like you got to get yourself up to go through some of these practices every single day at the crack of dawn when you might not be playing as much as you anticipated. So you kind of have to hype yourself up to get through some days, but he looked like a guy that just put his nose down and went through all the workouts on Thursday and looked really well moving through them. So hopefully, or, you know, hopefully he's a guy that can compete for some playing time and push maybe guys that are ahead of him and maybe even supersede them once they do start uh, with spring football here in a few weeks. I will say this one thing that um, we've heard, and I don't know if it's true. I'm not, not breaking news here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's just a pot hour. You can say whatever you want. We won't this get aggravated. True, but there's been some talk that maybe he might get a look at guard, um, and that would explain how maybe he could get on the field uh, earlier. Because uh, again, if Robert Scott's healthy, and if Jeremiah Byers is healthy, and if Jalen Early's healthy, I mean, it seems like those guys probably have some of the top spots to tackle, along with some of these guys brought in. But there's going to be wide open competition at guard, and if he is ready to do that. And I mean, he looks, he looks good. I could see him maybe being that guy. That makes sense too. If he bulked up too, probably right. Play a little, put a little more on the, on the frame so he can play on the interior a little bit better. So, um, all right. So we've been really positive. So here, here's the Aslan special hope I'm wrong about dot, dot, dot. I'll, I'll go first. Um, hope I'm wrong about, and listen, I've been wrong a lot, probably more than I've been right on things. Hope I'm wrong about Sean Murphy. Hmm. Sean Murphy looked a little stiff to me. Uh, didn't seem as fluid moving through the drills as some of the other guys in his position group. Again, it was one day. It's the last workout. Maybe he's a little bit fatigued. Um, don't know what he's battling, if anything at all. But he was the one guy um, that I was, you know, newcomers that kind of came across my radar when I was filming stuff. I'm like, oh, let me focus in on, on this. And again, it was like maybe one rep. And I'm like, ah, well, that, that didn't look exactly dynamic and, and, and you know, playmaking game changing freelancer guy out there but you know we've, we've got 15 practices to get better and figure it out so i hope i'm wrong dot 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 about sean murphy that's my pick can i have can i give you a uh and i didn't see much of him so i can't concur and i saw him out there but i just didn't watch him a lot um so i can't concur or uh argue with you um i've got like a, a mini half one that i don't yeah. want to i want to dip my toe in the water on but i don't want to go full force yeah. and it's uh one of your stars from earlier that weight concerned me a little bit with Josh Farmer. Okay. Um, just because, and he's, he's over 200, 310 pounds. I just don't know that that's where he needs to be. I think his, he's a guy to me, he's not the two gap guy. I mean, he's, he's more of a man, go make plays and, and be, I don't know. I just, I, I like his quickness, his explosiveness. And I'm not saying he didn't have it. And to your point, maybe Josh Storm said he, he has retained it, but that's kind of what I wrote in my, you know, my observations was if he can keep his quickness, then that man, he's going to be a beast, mm. but I just wonder if he can. So I'm a little, little tinge concerned about that, but we'll see what he ends up playing it. It may be a deal where they give it a look in the spring and see what it looks like and decide, Oh no, nah, man, let's kick it back to 300 mm. or, or three or five. I, I just, I'm not sure he needs to be a three fifteen. Um, but the other guy I would say is, uh, and it's not fair because offensive line, man, it's so hard to judge them in, in these things. But um, I thought maybe, uh, the, uh, is it TJ Ferguson, Terrence Ferguson, yeah. the kid from Alabama? Yeah. Correct. Um, he looked like he was laboring a little bit. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, and again, it's hard to judge those guys because you're an offensive lineman, and um, that's a really rigorous exercise. But I thought, you know, he's the guy that when they signed him, I went back and looked, and you know, he didn't do a whole lot at Alabama to, to get you too fired up about. And then now, I wasn't real impressed with him at this. Now, I don't. It's not like they're counting on him. It's not like they need him to be a star this year. Um, but he's one guy I was kind of hoping based on, you know, talking to him and, you know, the fact that he signed at Alabama, I was kind of mm-hmm. hoping he might be a guy that, uh, really would boost this offensive line. And, uh, I was kind of hoping to see more from him. I think we all quickly forget. Um, I'm sure I hope he's doing great. I, I should look up his LinkedIn and see what he's doing. He's hopefully making a great living, but then Adonis Thomas, did he go to Alabama or Georgia? I think he you was know? Alabama. I think. And then like, we were like, Oh, we just stole a they linebacker missed. from Alabama. Got it. You know, you're, say, saying, well. you're saying they missed too. Sometimes. Well. sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but again, Thomas, it was yeah. one workout in, in shorts and t-shirts. So we won't get uh, too right. fired up about it. You and Jeff were talking about as, as we wind down here, Iron, try to get you off. Uh, thanks for hanging around with us. Um, you mentioned some of these second year guys, um, but then you also kind of mentioned in passing the freshman defensive backs. Um, I didn't get to see a lot of Kai Bates. I did see Charles Lester. I feel like Charles Lester, Jamari Howard was a little, a little smidge of the Van Dravius Jacobs Hakeem dynamic that we had last year, where Lester was the Hakeem Williams, the more 
highly touted guy. But to me, I, I thought Jamari Howard looked every bit as athletic and talented and, and you know athletically gifted as, as Charles Lester, maybe even just a little bit more. Uh, and that makes you feel really excited about what they're going to be on the back end of this defense for years to come. Yeah, no, he definitely looks impressive. And he he's, I mean, is he the one they call track man? Is that the one his nickname is track man? I think in, in coming out of high school track guy, track man, I think. Sounds, sounds right. Um, sounds right yeah. But he's, yeah, no, he's definitely explosive. Uh, but I thought Kay, Kai Bates looks good too. And Charles Lester, what's ama- impressive to me about the, they're all like, they're all big framed um, yeah, athletic kids. Like they're not, Five eleven corners. You know, if you think back to just two or three years ago, a lot of those guys that they brought up, brought in a corner, maybe the first year or like you know the during the, I guess towards the end of Willie's time and then beginning of Norvell's time, you know, you you brought in a little bit more five eleven kind of DBs, and these guys are six one six two, long and athletic. They've got to get bigger and stronger. Uh, but I I just I'm impressed by their frames, and uh, I like that group. I think they're going to be good. And I also really like the the freshman receivers. I mean, I thought. Um, again, we're good through the whole roster here, but yeah, I thought the freshman receivers look good. I really like Camden Fryer. I thought he, you can see, um, hey, he's a guy that's a football player. Um, and which makes sense. Cause you know, didn't he, he didn't play, he didn't even play receiver most of his life. He's played other positions, played defense. Um, but he, he runs like a football player. Um, and you know, several of the other, uh, offensive, you know, freshman receiver type guys, I thought looked impressive as well. Yeah, I wanted to mention as a random name before we left, Luane McCoy. Yes. He's a, guy, he's a guy that I don't think a lot of people talked about during recruiting, but he looked really good, I thought, on Thursday. Yeah, he. I was watching him. It was, it's funny, that one drill where they where they they run and then they jump and then they run again. Like, he you have to jumps. Do like, a, like one of the guys has a barrel roll and you have to jump. But you don't yeah. jump over him because they don't want to get tripped up, but you jump right. like, timing-wise to work on your timing, yeah. But he jumped so high that he he – he it like slows him down in the drill because yeah. it's like, dude, you don't have to jump out of the gym. Oh. Uh, definitely explosive. Um, and he's a guy that I think in the um, on three rankings, like late in the process, I think he got bumped up okay. higher than, than some of those other guys that he was earlier. So yeah, I mean, I think he's got a lot of potential too. It's again, that's where you, you, you know, you just, you gotta check yourself a little bit because they're not in pads. It's not football. But man, it, it, it from the eye test, it certainly looks, looks like they've got a lot of guys, a lot of, Speed and athleticism. Hey, uh, before you go, speaking of eye tests, you were at the you were at Hauser the other night watching baseball. Um, what do you think about this 11-0 start for Lincoln? The guys uh, they got New Orleans coming up this weekend, then they got Florida midweek next week, and then they start ACC play. I think they're the number one batting team, if I'm not mistaken. They got the the top batting average in the entire country right now. I know it's early. I know they haven't played high level competition, <laughs> uh, but man, they just they got so many guys in that lineup, and and they're playing pretty clean in the field. Uh, some of your, I guess, initial takeaways from this first quarter, I guess, of the baseball season, Ira. No, nah, man, they can rake. Um, and, 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 you know, I was hearing that before the season, but I also kind of was like, yeah, man, I was kind of, I was really hopeful last year that they were going to, uh, you know, be much better. And, and during meets a couple of years, I, I thought they'd be better than they were. And it's just after three or four or five years of kind of disappointment, you start thinking, well, I'm not going to buy it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you think about the guys they brought back offensively, it makes sense because the guys they brought back offensively, you talk about, uh, Ferrer and Tibbs and, um, some of those guys and then Cam bring, Smith and yeah. Cam Smith, obviously, Incredible. and then you bring yeah. who's, who's, who's much more, uh, polished now is a hitter than he was a year ago. And then you bring in some of these guys, these, you know, that are just hitting the ball hard. What's impressive to me is even when it's not home runs, it's not just necessarily the home runs, but they hit the ball really really hard like and uh and it's uh and i like the approach has been good and yeah they're gonna see better pitchers but the other thing that i i think is is really a positive is that they just seem so uh confident right now and part of that's because they're playing well but you know again that florida gulf coast game to me florida gulf coast game uh to me was um interesting because i mean there was like that swagger was you know i I think there's I think they believe they're really, really good. Now we'll see when they play better teams, but I, I got to think that's going to help them when they go play Florida mm. or some of these teams that they have not um, maybe had that swagger against. So, so we'll see. But it's it's been a fun team to watch without question. Um, I'm you know you don't feel great necessarily yet about the bullpen. We'll see how that all plays out. But I like the starters and and um, yeah the offense. Man, you can't 
you can't, there's nothing you could say. I mean, it seems like every guy they put in there is producing. Even uh, Lodis is, pro- Lodis or Lodis, Lodis. is uh, yeah, Lodis. He's, he's producing as well. So it's, uh, it's fun to watch. I love DMS Ross. I mean, it's just yeah. up and down the lineup, man. It's a fun group. It is, it is. They're taking on New Orleans this weekend at Hauser. So uh, go check it out if you're here in town. All right, so next week's spring break, and then after that, spring football will start up. Uh, but we'll we'll have plenty of stuff going on, I'm sure, over on the website here in the meantime, right, Ira? A lot of spring previews and uh, and recruiting cr- uh, cranks back up. Uh, Matt's got a couple stories that will be up on the site today, kind of leading into this weekend. They've actually got a bunch of recruits coming on campus, uh, mostly on Saturday, I believe. So we'll have uh, coverage of that and then also uh, more spring position previews. It's been fun to do these position previews this year because – there's so much uncertainty. There's so many unknowns. Um, so there's a lot to you know kind of speculate about, uh, as opposed to again last year where it was kind of you just knew what you had. I mean, it was very um, it was such an experienced team. So so uh, yeah, keep those going. And then uh, like you said, that that week after spring break, it's it's going to be here. When a man gets to his age like mine, Aria, and he doesn't have a family to take care of, he has a lot of idle time on his hands, uh, and he spends his idle time thinking about very random things. I'm like, I wonder what it feels like to be Ira, just to be like a hyper productive guy, high volume dude, gets everything done for us on the website. Um, and I and I, I felt a little tinge of that on Thursday. I was just glad to be part of it, man. It was you, it was you, it was so the, cool, man. Like for real, I, Gene's out there taking photos at, at freaking six a.m. You're out there making jotting down observations. Matt is tweeting out clips of everything that's going on. Jeff's writing down observations to do a rap with you. Ben Spicer. Uh, is out there. Our guy Ben lived here, lives here in Tallahassee now. He's out there filming stuff. There's going to be another extended piece of video from yesterday's tour of duty work that'll be on our YouTube page. And then I'm, you know, I'm, I get Coach Storms, Coach Norvell posted in the end of 45 minutes. Ira, I can't believe I totally lost track of it. Like when Ben told me, I'm like, dude, I just uploaded 45 minutes and he looked at me like I was crazy. He's like, 45 minutes. And I'm like, maybe I accidentally double clicked and just like <laughs> duplicated 20 minutes worth. But no, like I filmed 45 minutes of stuff and we got it all up on the website all by the time everybody got pretty much clocked in at their desk on Thursday. I, I, not a, I don't like self self promoting, but, um, you know, felt really cool. I'm like, oh, this one, this one must, must be like to be like Ira. No, man, no, time, man. <laughs> no, it's awesome, dude. Nate, yeah, and, and you, you killed it. You knocked it out of the park. And I know that's why, not why you brought this up, but you did do a great job. But again, that's why I, I'm so excited about our staff because again, like on game days, I love working with you and Corey because we all know what each other's going to do. And Matt has added in well to that group as well. And like, it's a, it's a smooth running machine. And then you got Tom and Ben and those guys on the back end. And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was evident um, at that workout on Thursday. I'm excited for spring practice because uh, listen to him, people as I knows, knows what he's talking about. There's a lot of content on the site and uh, it was up quickly and hopefully y'all like it. All right, there we go. Ira, um, I think Corey will be back, but uh, I'll try to find creative ways to bring you back on the show if you'll hang out with us. I appreciate it, man. Sounds good, buddy. He's Ira Schofel, managing editor of Warchant.com, everybody. All right, thanks again to Ira Schofel. He, of course, a five-star for a reason. It's earned, everybody. Stay connected to Warchant.com. Plenty going on over at the website. Jeff Cameron Show, 1 to 3 o'clock. As Ira said, recruiting, gearing back up. Matt Lassere, Michael Langson, got you covered. Ben Spicer also helping out on that. Weekend slate, baseball. Florida State hosts Uno. Uh, New Orleans, that is. Softball down at Florida Gulf Coast, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, basketball closes out against Miami. Uh, we'll see how that factors into where they end up in the ACC tournament. Uh, ladies also in action as well. So stay connected to Warchant.com, the ultimate semi-sports source. Thanks again, everybody, for listening to Wake Up War Champ presented by the Corner Pocket Barn Grill.